blessed. The uh, Hebrew word is eshur. But we say blessed. How happy. Eshur. How happy is everyone. That's what blessed means. Happy. Would you believe God wants you to be happy? I'm glad he does. How happy is everyone that feareth the Lord. Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, the word feareth in the Hebrew is the word Yahweh. Yahweh. And it means reverence, deep respect. Do you respect God? Well, you could ask me the same question. It's all fair. Pastor, do you respect God? Well, what does that mean? Well, let's find out. Deuteronomy, you know, mark your place here. It'll help you. I'll mark mine. Um, but Deuteronomy chapter 10, to begin... We'll go to Joshua, we'll go to Ecclesiastes, Matthew and 1 Peter, but let's start in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Because my happiness depends on my respect for God, my respect to God, my respect for God. My happiness depends on that. Did you know your happiness depends on respecting God? What are you saying, preacher? Well, I'm saying you can't be happy unless you respect God. That's, that's major. That's big. That's, and look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now... Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of his people then, but of his people still today? Because Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does he require? But to do what? To fear thy God. And then he expounds to walk in all his ways to walk in all it, not just some of his ways all of his ways and we're going to look at that we're going to look at the believer's walk here in just a moment we need to know what that means and uh, to love him to love him. And he goes on to say, fearing God means to serve. To serve. Fearing God is about your walk, it's about your love, it's about your service to the Lord thy God. And um, with how much of our heart? Oh. Wow. And with all thy soul. Happiness depends on this. You know, mediocrity, lukewarmness, apathy, careless indifference. <laughs> you know, and then people wonder, oh, I can't understand why I'm not happy. Oh, these are very thought-provoking. Joshua chapter 24. So if you, let's, uh, let's, we're not far. We're pretty close to Joshua chapter 24. And uh, <clears throat> verse 14, that's Joshua 24, verse 14. <clears throat> the verse begins, Now, therefore, fear the Lord. You know, um, 
Did, did you know you can get into a lot of trouble by disrespect? As it concerns relationships, if you show disrespect, you can invite a world of hurt upon yourself. God is big on this matter of respect. It, that's what he's saying. He's saying, respect me. Respect me. And then he's telling us uh, what that translates into. What kind of behavior. So here it is. Uh, now therefore, fear the Lord. And what does that mean? Well, serve him in in what? In sincerity. In sincerity. And in truth. And fearing the Lord then would mean put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Exclusive service unto the Lord. That's all packaged into respecting God. Serving Him exclusively and uh, no idols. Uh, God first. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let's uh, find our way to Ecclesiastes. So we're looking at what it means to respect God. Um, there it is, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the bottom line of life on this planet. Here it is. Fear God, and, and so what does that translate into? Obedience. Fearing God, keep his commandments. That's obedience. Boy, there's a lot packed into this word of fearing God. Here it's obedience. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of God. Man. Now, what are we talking about again? What is all of this essential to? Happiness. Remember? Happiness. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. You know, um, people really do want to be happy. There are no shortcuts. There just are no shortcuts. If you ever take a shortcut, <laughs> there's no shortcut to happiness. Matthew 10, more commentary about fearing God in Matthew chapter 10. So there's a lot that God is packaged into this word fear as it translates into day and -in day life. Wow. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, verse 28, and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. Where? Did you realize that? It's not just your body, the, not just the body of the unsaved. Uh, it, it's the body and soul of the unsaved spends eternity in hell. Uh, finally, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7.
1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read it. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to our text in uh, Psalm 128. Hope you marked your place. So, what does it mean to fear God? Obey Him. Love Him. Be sincere. Serve Him. No idolatry. You want happiness. You want to be blessed. Um, it goes beyond mouth speak to to life so blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord secondly that walketh in his ways that walketh in his ways well what does that mean Romans chapter 6 verse 4 I hope you I hope you came ready to use your Bibles tonight amen we use our Bibles in Gateway Baptist Church. All right. Um, so what does that mean to uh, walk in his ways? Romans 6 and verse number 4. <clears throat> Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. Happiness means to walk in newness of life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Walk in newness of life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. So I want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Well, this is God telling us how. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by what, class? And not by sight. Now, do you realize what God just said in that very short passage? Do you, what is God saying? We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith equates to trusting in God Walking by sight means I'm trusting in, in me. God says, if you want to be happy, you're going to have to walk by faith. It means you're going to have to trust me and not yourself. If you want to be happy. Now, if you, you don't want to be happy, if you want to be miserable, then just do the opposite. But uh, I'd much rather be happy. Galatians chapter 5, the walk of the believer. Blessed, happy. How happy is everyone that feareth the Lord. And that uh, has the believer's walk. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, please. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Here's another counsel on the believer's walk. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, 
and ye shall not fulfill the lust, sinful desires of the flesh. So that means I'm, I'm going to have to listen to who instead of who? I'm going to have to listen to God instead of the sinful, carnal appetites of my sin nature. If I want to be happy, I'm going to have to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Ephesians chapter, this is the walk of the believer. This is the difference between happiness or unhappiness. Fearing God and walking in his ways. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. Uh, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. That's an interesting word. He, he's begging the church. He's pleading with the church that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Lowliness, what does that kind of walk, what does a worthy walk look like? Verse 2, lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. That's what it means to walk worthy. Unity, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond. Bond means glue, <laughs> adhesive, in the bond of peace. Wow. Ephesians chapter 5, and you're in Ephesians, so maybe you have to turn one page. I don't know. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. More about this walk that is connected to my, my happiness. Ephesians 5 2, uh, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. How do we know Christ loves us? Amen. He died for us. There's no greater love than that a man should give his life for another. And walk in love as Christ hath, also hath loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Wow. Verse 15, same, same chapter. Just drop down to verse number 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Don't, what does that mean? Don't waste your life. Be wise with the time God blesses you with. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The walk of the believer. And finally, and uh, we're going to look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. All of this are the essentials for happiness. I just want to be happy. I just wish I could be happy. Blessed is the man happy. How happy is the man that feareth, feareth the Lord. Wow. At first John, this all goes beyond mouth speak. This is lifestyle. Yeah. First John, chapter 1, verse 7. Um, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship uh, one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. What does that mean to walk in the light? Do people, do people, um, do they walk one way in the light and do they walk another way in the darkness? Okay. Do people that are walking in the light, do they behave one way, but when in the dark, behave a different way? Men love darkness because they're their deeds are evil. Happiness, God says. Uh, God says what you are out in the open. Um, he says be that way when there's nobody around. But God's always around. God is never not there. God is never not looking. God is never not listening. Practicing the presence of Christ every moment of every day, walking in the light. Um, happiness. I mean, th this is the pathway to happiness. Uh, chapter two, uh, chapter two, and in uh, verse six, uh, <clears throat> he that saith he abideth in him that you know Jesus, he's your savior ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Do you realize everything that we've looked at as it pertains to the believer's walk is the way he walked. It's the way he walked. Everything we've just looked at. As it pertains to fearing God, that's what Jesus did. All right, let's go back to our text in Psalm 128. And I know that's a lot. I know that's a lot, but uh, so everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways, blessed. How happy. Verse 2, for thou shalt now... <clears throat> Here are the blessings that accompany the fear of the Lord and uh, obedience to the Lord, which we say that walk in his ways. Here are the blessings that accompany. Uh, number one, verse number two, for thou shalt do what? God says you'll eat. How many of you would rate that up high? You realize what God is saying when he says, thou shalt eat? Do you understand what God is saying? That's the way God puts it, but you know what, in fact, God is saying? If you're eating, if you're eating, you're going to be able to stay what? Alive. God says, I'll sustain your life. I'll keep you alive. Um, thou shalt eat. But secondly, uh, the labor. Um, if we work not, neither should we what? It, labor. If you want to eat, you labor. That's the Bible way. That's God's way. That's the right way. And uh, so another blessing beyond sustenance your life being sustained is labor. God's, God says, if you'll fear me and you'll obey me, God says, I'll keep you alive. And he says, I'll bless you with labor. Now we would say, I'll bless you, you know, a job, employment, however you want to say it. But here God says labor. <laughs> uh, these are blessings that accompany fearing God and obedience. He's going to keep you alive. He says, I will bless you with employment. 
And let me say, uh, I met Jesus because a friend brought me to Jesus in 1972. And um, my mom signed a worker's permit for me when I was 15 years old. And I've never looked back. She signed the permit. I got a job. <laughs> and I can truthfully say, uh, since Jesus came into my heart, um, I've never been without employment. So, starting in, when was I, 15, 1973, <laughs> that's when I was 15. How many years is that, you mathematicians? 2000 and, 2023. Go, Praise God. Praise God. I mean, this is my testimony. I mean, I'm sure you all have testimonies as well. Um, um, happy shalt thou be. Happy shalt thou be. Happy shalt thou be. And it shall be well with thee. Uh, Proverbs twenty-eight fourteen. You know, I was so glad that my mom signed that workers permit because then I could go work and earn money, and then with the money I earned, I could buy things. And you know, I really enjoyed that. That was kind of nice. Work, earn money, and then with the money you've earned, make the purchase. Boy, that felt good. Amen? Um, <clears throat> Proverbs 28, verse number 14. There's that word again. Do you see it? Happy. Happy is the man that feareth always. But he that hardeneth his heart, what happens to the person that hardens his heart? Trouble. Uh, stops believing, stops believing God, God's word. Um, stops obeying. Trouble. Happiness. You want happiness. There are no shortcuts to this. Um, all right, what else? Uh, Psalm 84, verse 11. Psalm chapter 84. Let's see what we find there. Verse 11. Oh, what a promise this is. For the Lord God is a sun and a and shield. Um, he lights the way. He protects us. The Lord will give grace, that is God's help and glory. Uh, no good thing will he withhold from them that do what? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly. Wow. The believers walk, fearing God. Blessing, happiness. Um, and it shall be well with thee. That's what it means. It's a life of abundance. It's the abundant life. It's the life Jesus promised. Um, now, now, our text, uh, Psalm 128 and then Verse number three, what, are, there, are there any other blessings? Can you see another blessing in verse three? Thy wife. Um, Proverbs 31.10. Thy 
my wife, Proverbs 31.10. He that getteth a wife getteth a good thing from the Lord. A, uh, A wife who believes in Jesus, a wife that uh, loves, honors, obeys the Lord. Uh, In context, uh, a fellow believer to be your wife. Now, but he that getteth a wife getteth a good thing from the Lord. Uh, A blessing, a blessing from God. I mean, wow. Are you hearing what God is saying? Wow. Um, that's major. I mean, so, what are, you there, Proverbs 31, uh, verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? A woman with biblical morals? A virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Wow. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Wow. All of this, God promises, if I will do what? Well, what did I title the message? If I will respect God. God says, I will do all of this for you if you respect me. And God knows if I respect him. Not just me, God knows You respect him. God knows. Um, Isn't respect to do, isn't, doesn't respect mean to do what you're told to do by the person you respect? Obedience. Wow. And, uh, July 7th, what happened on July 7th, honey, 1979, got married. (laughs) Just wanted to be sure she hadn't forgotten. I know I hadn't forgotten, Amy. Got to check on her once in a while. (laughs) Amen. Wow. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She helps her husband. She helps her husband. Uh, She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night. You know, before the sun's up. (laughs) Oh, it feels so good to lay in the bed and sleep in. Not this woman. She gets up when it doesn't feel good. She goes to work. And giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. Wow. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. Look at this woman. She girdeth her loins with strength. What does that mean? She keeps herself physically fit. And strengtheneth her arms. Why does she do that? So that she keeps her health. So that she can keep helping. 
She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. <laughs> she's up before everybody. And after everybody's gone to bed at night, she's still up. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. She even, with some of her resource, she gives it to help poor people. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Once in a while, God brings needy folks by. And then he watches us. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with, well, they're all clothed with the clothing that she made. The clothing she made with her hands while everybody was still in bed, while everybody had gone back to bed. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. What does that mean? She keeps herself attractive. She doesn't let herself go. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She has helped her husband to achieve success. He is successful in part because of her contribution to the family. She maketh fine linen, selleth it, delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, she... What does that tell us about her? If she opens her mouth and wisdom comes out, does that not tell you where she spends some of her time? In the Word of God. Wow. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of... The bread of what? You won't find this woman sitting around wasting her life, wasting her time. Not this woman. She's the virtuous woman. Her children arise up and call her. What do they call her? Mom, you're so happy. There's that word blessed. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. The children look at mom and they say, Mom, you're so happy. I wonder why. Her husband also, her husband says, you're, you're, you're so happy. And he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that, a woman that does what class? See, it all comes back. Now, why does this woman behave this way? She respects God. She knows what God's word says about the responsibilities of marriage, the responsibilities of being a wife, the responsibilities of being a godly mother. And she honors God's word. The dividend is she's happy. She's blessed. But what a price. It's that old saying, you can't get something for nothing. See, that people want happiness, but they want to invest nothing for it. But she's no fool. She's willing to pay the price. She did pay the price. 
works. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know what this woman is like? <clears throat> have, you ever, have you ever heard this expression? And I seldom get these right. It's like when she walks into the room, the whole room does what? The whole room lights up. The whole room glows. It's the happiness of God. Oh, but what a price she paid. Wow. What a price. You know, um, somebody said the, the wife is the heart of the home. Wow. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. <sighs> oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Just amazing. God says, if I will fear him and obey him, God says, this is a blessing I will give to you. And he has. God has blessed me in this way. And believe you me when I say I'm thankful. Psalm 128, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. And then Look at this, there's more. Thy children. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> it means your children will be beneficial to you. Your children will contribute your children will be assets rather than liabilities. God says, not only will your wife be a blessing, God says your children will be too. Boy, God packed a lot into this, didn't he? These are the blessings of God that do accompany fearing God, respecting God, and obeying God. Ah, uh, wow. Um, behold, verse 4, that thus shall the man be blessed that does what? That feareth the Lord. Do you fear God? You could ask me the same. Do I fear God? And I can say, based on God's promise, if you do, this is a beautiful picture of your life. And this all goes beyond mouth speak. This is godly living. Father, uh, wow. Humbled by this, uh, Thankful, praising you tonight. Huh. Amazed by this. It's all so incredible. And your word is so true. And your promises are good in Christ Jesus. They are yea and yea in Christ Jesus. God bless your word. Lord, um, how do you find us? How do you find us? Do you find us respecting you? Do you find us in obedience to you? How do you find us, God? How do you find us? God bless your word.
And by your word, help us. We need all the help we can get. Lord Jesus, to God be all the glory. We give God all the praise, all the credit. He gets it all. In Jesus' name.